more in the dark videos. One of my favorite females. I've shown her to you plenty of times before. She's a hypo, Honduran T positive blood. What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily, and I'm returning to the scene of the crime. You can see my pool deck and my pool cage all mangled from Hurricane Ian. Yes, you can hear the generators going in the back. We still don't have electricity, but the generators have been holding up really well, so I can't complain about that. I was trying to think about what I wanted to show you guys today, so I decided to be creative because I really was kind of a little burnt out after this hurricane, and Pablo was back today and was helping clean up everything and we were just straightening stuff up and basically um what i did was i turned the lights off because the lights had gone off anyway we were it was late in this it was about seven o'clock in the snake room and they automatically go off and i just turned on my video camera on my phone with the light on and i just filmed things in the dark so that's going to be today's uh, theme snakes in the dark at palumbo's pythons and boas stay tuned take a look i hope you enjoy all right, turn the lights out. I want to see what's going on in the dark here in my facility. So it's about six, seven o'clock at night. And I want to take a look and peek around. So I really didn't know what video to do today. Here's my female Burmese python. She's very interesting. She's beautiful. She's got the wild type phenotype, even though genetically she's a triple head, or pied, albino, and caramel. She, um, she's really beautiful, but she will not eat a jumbo rat. She does not like rats that are too big. She kind of is self-limiting. She's big and she's big, you know, already. I don't care. I don't need to, I don't need a humongous, humongous python, but she really will not eat anything that's too big. She doesn't like it. And, you know, that's cool with me. Large rats are enough. I'm not, I'm, I'm not breeding my berms anyway. I'm just kind of keeping them as display animals and educational animals here in Florida. And it's, that's fine with me. Beautiful, beautiful girl. All right. There's the uh, clock monitor I showed you the other day. I have been thinking about this for two days now. I haven't opened up the cage at all. I haven't decided, you know, anything. I haven't fed it. And he's only been here every you know, three days or so. I think what I'm going to do is I am going to put these guys outdoors. I have an outdoor enclosure. I think it's perfect for these guys. From what I understand, everyone I talk to, they really like climbing. They like height. These cages have enough width, but they don't have the height. Too, they're, not, they're not tall enough and they can't climb in here. So I think that's going to be the trick. Plus they can bask outside in the, in the sun. If I feed them, I don't have to worry about, you know, putting you know, ceramic humidors or light in here. The bask, they do it outside. And especially during this hurricane, I'm running generators right now. I really don't want to be running any more, you know, basking lights because it draws a tremendous amount of power from the generator. So that's the plan. There's the, um, the other proc monitor. He's a little more skittish. The male seems to be much more relaxed. And I've been kind of observing them a lot, you know, to see how they respond. And Because at some point I have to, I'm gonna have to take these guys out. So, I don't want to um, be surprised. She's gonna be more of a challenge. She's smaller, but she's a little more aggressive and a little more distrusting. So, I'm sure blasting this light in her face is funny, not like helping her out at all. But, she's got a little, maybe stir crazy in there. So, I'm gonna take her out tomorrow with the mail. This is gonna be fun. I'll try to videotape that and get him in that outdoor enclosure. That's the plan. There she is. Beautiful, beautiful girl. We gotta really work with her a lot because she's, like I said, a little untrusting. And we certainly don't want to take a bite from there, but if we treat her with respect, hopefully she'll treat us with respect. My good friend, Shauna Rock, has been giving me some tips on how to handle these guys. And tomorrow I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the plunge. 
Here's our, uh, this little boy I produced a number of years ago. He's one of my favorite Burmese pythons. So beautiful. He's basically hit, I had every gene that I was trying to hit on this uh, breeding, so I kept him back as my whole back. He's a hypo granite green, which is patternless albino. Also the hypo albino is known as pearl, so we can call him a pearl granite green or green granite, pearl green granite. He's like basically a patternless, beautiful albino with like a yellow coloration. It's just really nice. He's got a beautiful temperament, this guy, you know, once you get him out of his cage. And once again, one of my favorites. Definitely a good animal when I go on to educational type stuff because he likes to be held and handled. And so I'm very confident that even around kids, he's, he's, he's very safe to, to bring around. So beautiful little male. There's my Russo Red Pastel Hypo Sterling Boa, female. One of my biggest snakes, or one of my biggest boas, I should say. I am, a, you know, she just ate a big rat. My friend Shane, whose store I helped rescue, you know, the, the croc monitors and all that stuff. He had rats in there, so we basically took all his live rats and his frozen stuff so it wouldn't go to waste. And she ate a nice big wrap before, but you know, she, she's pretty stretched, pretty thin. I, I'm, I, I had her paired with a male all year and she didn't give me a litter or anything. I'm really wondering if she might possibly still potentially be with babies, although she's eating, so I don't know. We'll have to see. Right now she's on the hot spot because she just ate a big rat, so. But look at her scales, they're like really stretched. And I really don't feed her that much. So there is a possibility that she's got some babies in her, some uh, Russo Red Pastel Sterling, so we'll see. Once again, another at night lights out video here. All right, here's my beautiful Super Fire female, Boa. This is a leucistic, black-eyed leucistic. Here is the single copy of that gene, the Fire Diamond, male. I had these guys breeding early because they she kind of didn't go this past season, so I put a male in and she, they've been kind of seen a few locks actually. But I, I just fed them both, so she'll probably be hanging on that hot spot. He didn't eat, so he's because he's breeding. She ate, and I probably that might be her last meal I give her for a while. You know, if they eat, a lot of times I'll give it to them. I don't usually cut the boa's food until like like end of October. So because I started breeding her early, I kept feeding her. I might cut it now for a couple, like maybe eight weeks and see what happens. Uh, but uh, one of my favorite snakes. Someone actually wanted to buy it this past week. I said, not for sale. All right, let's see what's under this hide box. Oh, look, we have a scoria. We have a scoria. It's interesting how they don't sit on the hot spots sometimes. She just ate a big rat. She's not even interested in sitting on the hot spot, so I'll just leave her alone. She's a scoria that's parahet and head for blood. I thought she was gonna give us a litter this past year, but she didn't. And uh, have to wait till next year, I guess. There she is. I don't want to disturb her too much because she just did eat. She wants to be left alone. I'm surprised she's not over there on the hot spot though. So we'll leave her alone. She's beautiful. Let's see what else we could find here in the dark at Palumbo's Pythons and Millers. Oh, let's go in here. Ah, that girl just ate too. That is a girl that I produced a number of years ago. I can't believe she's so big I produced her. It's an IMG, Annery, Het Call Albino. Not completely black because there's no motley gene in there. I bred her this past year, but I don't think she, uh, maybe she was a little too young. She didn't really go, um, but she, I thought she was gonna go. I saw the locks and everything. She's big, she's beautiful, and hopefully we'll breed her this year. We love our IMGs, that's for sure. Here's an interesting sharp albino, sun glow. She's a lavender line sun glow so 
She's got a nice big rat in her. We're breeding her too to a fire pet albino. So we might actually find that we uh, get some uh, cool fire albinos this year. We bred her all last year. She didn't go. I think she might have been a little young. We'll leave her alone, let her digest. Here's a, here's a motley albino, call albino, het leopard. She actually has a name because she was one of my first boas. Her name is Pinky. She had a pink tail when she was first born. They kind of lose their, a lot of times they lose their pattern, these boas, as they get bigger. She's given me many, many, many good litters. I think she's given me three litters over her life so far. Hopefully we'll get another one this, uh, this in two years. She just gave us one this year. Got some cool leopard albino stuff. And she's uh, she's a sweetheart. She's been one of the, she was one of the first boas I had, so I used to handle her a lot. And she's, she's just, she never strikes. She's just a very, very mellow snake. They're all sitting on the hot spot because they just ate. It's always good to film boas after they eat, as long as you don't pick them up, because they're mellow and they don't, they're not like aggressive. They don't move around too much. They just want to digest their food. All right, here's my uh, nastiest boa probably in my collection. And I blame it myself because I got her in a, a trade. She was already an adult. Sometimes it's hard to take other people's, you know, stuff that might've had a bad experience growing up. I don't know, but she's, she's a motley fire diamond. So she's one copy of fire gene. Obviously the two copies, she gives us that black eyed leucistic like we saw earlier. She, uh, I was convinced that she was gonna go and give us a litter. She's pretty big. She still might, she's, she feels really big. Um, she feels like she has babies in her actually, but she hasn't really been laying on the hot spot, which is kind of weird, you know? So I don't know. I've had very bad luck with fire diamonds breeding fire diamond and fire diamond. And I don't know what it is, it's something in my facility that these fire diamonds don't like. So we'll see. She did eat, so it's probably unlikely that she's gonna be giving us a litter anytime soon, but I'll keep trying. Once again, the only way you can fail is if you quit. All right, here is a super mandarin belly leopard being bred by a albino eclipse or sun clips. She's in shed. You can see those eyes. Look at those eyes. I think she might, um, this might be her pre or post ovulation shed, maybe. If it is, in 100 days, we might see some babies. So we'll have to see. She hasn't been eating, which is a good sign. She's big. She, uh, I did see some breeding action with these guys earlier in the year. So, or actually early, later in late summer. I kind of put these guys together a little later. So we could we could potentially see an end of the year litter here. So that's kind of exciting. Especially because I haven't produced any manner of belly stuff myself yet. And this is super manner of belly, so everything's gonna be super manner. There's gonna be manner of belly. Uh, everything will be leopard because they're both leopards. And we'll have some 50% will be motleys, and everything will be head albino. So this is gonna be a cool clutch or a cool, cool litter potentially if we get it. More in the dark videos. One of my favorite females. I've shown her to you plenty of times before. She's a hypo Honduran T positive blood. Honduran T positive is one of the best, nicest T positives out there, I think. She's beautiful. She um, is big. I really thought she was going to go this past season, and she didn't. And I was really disappointed. This is probably one of my biggest disappointments. I thought she was going to go, and she just didn't. She's. I just felt like we were gonna get some crazy, crazy looking babies from her. Even anything that even remotely looked like her would have been acceptable, you know? So we'll have to wait again this season. We'll try to breed her again. She's been eating, she's up to, she's got some nice size. Now I probably should start breeding her early because she didn't go last year. So she might go earlier this year. Wow, it's amazing how this light on this camera really at night makes her look even more spectacular. Look at those purple swirls in there. And, She's got a lot of cool stuff. For an adult to look this good, it just it tells you a lot about the quality of this animal. All right, there's my albino olive python who's probably gonna come try to bite me right now. She just ate a nice big rat, so maybe she'll, she'll be satisfied for 10 minutes and relax. I really didn't feed her. I fed her sparingly all year. Now I've been blasting her with a lot of food because I'm gonna 
stop feeding her at the end of the month and try to start breeding her again. I was supposed to have outdoor enclosures built. My friend Chase almost has them done and then we got hit with this hurricane here. So I don't know what's going on with those, but it's still warm here, so it doesn't even matter. I need to put her outside when it gets cold. That's really when the most important time is gonna be. To chill her down, I wanna get her into those, the 50s. In the winter here, we'll hit, we'll hit like some weeks where we get some 50 degree weather. And I think that might kick her into breeding here. And we have backup this year. Because like I told you earlier, I showed you guys about a few weeks ago, I got a really beautiful gift in the mail from uh, one of my clients who has bought boas from me before. And he sent me this beautiful pair of head albino and albino, olive pythons. The female is actually the head and the male is the albino. So these guys are smaller. They just ate today too. So we'll see how they do. I might keep one pair inside, one pair outside. Maybe I'll swap them different males and different females. I don't know, I haven't decided yet, but we have time still to figure that out. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Hopefully you enjoyed today's little quick hit video. We looked at some uh, big boa females that are looking to hopefully uh, produce some babies this coming season. They're uh, some of my favorites and, uh, you know, some will start earlier, some start a little later. The ones that don't don't go the year before, sometimes you can get them started earlier and they'll actually go earlier. Usually my boas, unlike the ball pythons, are cycled. So I usually try to, at November 1st, you know, cool the temperatures and start pairing them. And so I usually get a lot of my boa litters around the same time of the year. But this year uh, I did start pairing a couple things a little earlier just because they didn't go the year before. And so we'll have to see what happens, you know. Uh, once again, I try to be a little creative. So we got to actually see those croc monitors again. Hopefully tomorrow I'm going to get the, uh, the courage up to go in there and try to move them into the outdoor enclosure. So that's the, the goal for tomorrow. I have to do a lot of bodybuilding uh, video fo uh, filming tomorrow too, though. So we'll have to see. Hopefully Pablo and I will, won't get eaten alive by the uh, croc monitors. But now I'm, I'm studying their behavior. So the male seems like he's interested in coming out. So we'll have to see. It should be a little, it uh, should be fun should be fun so that's what we got to look forward to tomorrow for now though uh you know the sun is setting here look at that beautiful skyline you would never know we had a hurricane a couple days ago right well a lot of fort myers beach uh sanibel island pine island are destroyed people have no homes so i want to send my prayers and really my love and support out to all these people here in my area because it's uh, it was hit really bad and you know we really need the support of everyone here to help these people you know eat have shelter have clothes to wear and so if you can donate anything you know please do uh, I know a lot of people relief workers have come down here and are clearing trees and doing all they can to help out so that's awesome all right for now though if you love these videos and you like what you're seeing encourage me Hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.